with my latest inverter. It's a Sunsync Echo or Echo or probably it's E C C O. Uh, 3.6 kVA, so it's a 3.6 k what they call it inverter. Um, really annoying thing about it: tiny, tiny, tiny wire wiring compartment. I'm actually going to cut in a bit in this video where I show in a uh, Solar converter, which is so much better, which is the base inverter is made by the same company. These are both um, I think both they uh, build, at least they build the base guts of the inverter and then each company has their own modified versions, but yeah, the wiring compartment's unacceptably tiny especially on the AC side um, yeah uh, also another thing, it's got this weird thing where I don't know if that's just because the main market for these inverters is in 50 cycle land, but it's got some kind of weird glitch where it's showing the mains frequency 0.0, .0 cycles per second when it's running on 60 cycle right now yeah, that's a little bit annoying, although to the inverter's credit, it does have this kind of, a, what, what it calls a system flowchart screen, which gives a lot more information than the base screen on the uh, uh, Solarks do, and so for Solark to have something like this would be a lot better. Because it shows not just what the grid connection, load, etc. are doing, but also shows what each photovoltaic array independently do, is doing. It doesn't just amalgamate them all together. So yeah, and when I was first hooking this up, it did have some kind of a weird glitch where it was just beeping constantly, but it wasn't giving any kind of an error code, and the alarm light wasn't lighting up. And that's because it thought that the battery that it was connected to was at 0% state of charge. Now, there is a glitch that I've had once from uh, solar converters, but those self-corrected in a short period of time. This, I actually had to hook up some solar through that jank hackiness. Uh, but yeah, this is very much a, a temporary setup and get it to charge the batteries and then it would, you know, shut up. Actually, what I had to do was, instead of it working off of the battery assumed percent state of charge, I just battery operating potential. And that seemed to make it go away. But yeah, time will tell how okay this is because this did cost, I think like $1,300 or $1,400 after international shipping and something like a 30% import duty, so we'll see how we do. So not gonna, this is not going to be the last video on this thing. And of course also what I'm doing is because our American three uh, or 240 volts is different from the stuff that this is designed for, and I don't know if it'll work happy with the quote-unquote neutral being at you know, 120 volts the way it is over here with our 240. I do have this thing running on a transformer that I'm going to put a little clip of. It's working as a uh, conversion transformer. And of course what I'm doing to power the thing is I'm running it on this transformer. It's a 277 volt transformer, but it's got minus 5 and minus 10% tap, so 263 and 249 volts. And so what I'm doing is I'm feeding in 240 on the 249 volt tap, and then I just have the output 120 volt windings wired in series for 240 volts. Just because that, because 100 or 240 volts is standard over here, but it's different from the kind of standard that's in England, which is where I bought the inverter from. So I'm just using that as a grid sort of simulator, just to make the 240 volt single phase with respect to ground that it's expecting. Because it may work on. Uh, our 240 volts where each hot is 120 volts RMS with respect to ground. They're just 180 degrees out of phase with each other. But I don't have the money to risk sacrificing one of these inverters to find out. At least not at this time. And for comparison on something that's a lot easier to wire up. Solark. So much more space. And this is a very early build date. Solar 12K. This one was October 2019, actually. One of the first ones made. And, uh, yeah. On newer ones, like this one, which is June 2020, it's even bigger. So, so much easier to wire up! And also, it does things properly where you've got proper terminals to land your solar 
feeds on because that other thing being largely made for the uh, UK and uh, South African markets, it's got MC4s on the inverter, which, eh, I mean, unless it's a micro-inverter where it is actually out at the module that is electrically connected to, just, no, have these flippy things have screw terminals, but, mm,